I do want to say there we've gotten pushback on the this whole idea of like the Sixers are so much better are going to cause chaos with Joel back. I, I can't find the chatter who's saying people are overvaluing them versus Miami that the Sixers role players are inconsistent. Buddy, role players by definition right. are inconsistent. Yeah. If they were consistent, they wouldn't be role players. And if we want to highlight the Heat specifically, they're a great example of a franchise that always gets the benefit of the doubt, no matter how bad. Heat and I'm culture, not saying babe. they're bad. They get the benefit of the doubt every single season, even when they're not all that good, because, and to their credit, they've been able to overperform in the playoffs from time to time. The Heat are the definition of an average team this year. They have a, a very good defense, and that'll get you a long way in the playoffs. They have the 21st offense in the NBA yep. this year. Their net rating is worse than the Sixers. They're 16th, so they're almost exactly average. Mm -hmm. That suggests mm -hmm. there are a lot of inconsistent players on the Miami Heat. So. It's really like we can sit here and talk about the matchups matter, right? I do think in Miami's favor, for example, in a play-in game, more so in a series, but definitely in a – you scout and you plan and do all this. I think Spolstra is one of the few coaches in the league I would say is like he's clearly better than Nick Nurse, like has earned that title. I, I personally think Spo is the best coach in the NBA right now. Now, does that play out in the regular season or in a one-game format the way it would over seven games? Maybe not, but that's a reason to take them seriously in the play-in. But, but look, like I'm not going to sit here and worry about Miami because if you're worried about a team that over 70-plus games has been about as average as it gets – don't even bother watching the playoffs if they make it. Like you, you don't believe in the team, and that's fine, but – it's just a defeatist mindset when when Joel has played, they are 27 and 8. When Joel plays Thank you, against Ash. very good teams, they've they've ripped off a lot of big like I wouldn't count the yesterday's Thunder win as like a, a signature win because they're missing yeah. their two best players. Maybe two of their two three, three best three, players. Yeah. It depends on how you say Chet versus Jalen Williams, whatever. But they beat the full strength Thunder, the full strength Wolves, the full strength Nuggets. So those are the three best teams this year in the Western Conference. They beat, they beat Boston. The, they beat the Clippers without Joel yep. on the road and should have beat them twice. They beat Boston early in the season. This is a team with a lot of good wins against good competition. And December, we all talked about, oh, it's a soft schedule. Who cares about Joel's stats, whatever. We had that whole argument. The fact of the matter is, they beat the shit out of every bad team they played. They and were not, that, yep. that is often the mark of a contender. It's you beat the good teams, but you destroy the rest of the teams. You take care of your business. That's what they've done all year. If Joel's not truly healthy, I don't think they can get to that level they were at earlier this season. That's not realistic. If he has enough time to build that knee up, to get the conditioning up, they absolutely can compete with anybody in the league. They have proven that with actual results and, frankly, during a part of the NBA calendar that I think is more meaningful than any other part of the year. I think that period from November up until mid-January, early February tends to be the most telling part of most NBA seasons. Post-deadline, it's a long death march to the playoffs where guys are taking nights off, teams are conservative with injuries, all that. I get it. Any skepticism about the Sixers in the playoffs is warranted given the history, Absolutely. given Joel's health, all that. You can't sit here and just like bitch, 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 bitch. Like you can, but you're no fun to be around. <laughs> and if you're going to invest in the team, you might as well try to have some goddamn fun watching them. Yeah. I mean, Miami scares you for three reasons. One, Spo. Two, Jimmy. Three, it's one game. And in one right. game, shit can happen. Anything like, can happen. We can sit here and talk all we want about the Sixers and why they look good, and it's a decent matchup for them. At best, that is a 60-40 advantage for the Sixers, and a 40% thing happens every freaking day. Uh, you don't want to be in this position, but you are, so you can't change it. Yeah. Um, that is why it is scary. And because if you lose, the consequences are pretty drastic and having to go up against Boston in the first round. 
But as a matchup, like that is a flawed Miami team. Kyle just listed off the reasons why they are. They are certainly flawed offensively, uh, and the Sixers, if they are humming on all cylinders, should have a chance to uh, to shut them down. We all city like the mayor. 